So you know this guy, Dave Weigel. Now, we've had problems with Dave Weigel in the past. So he's a writer for the Washington Post. He used to do pro-Iraq war, pro war rallies in college which is why he gets handpicked by Jeff Bezos, the guy who's in bed with the CIA, to cover progressive politics for the Washington Post. That's the guy, the guy who was a Republican and pro-Iraq war, did pro-Iraq war rallies when he was the editor of his college newspaper. Not kidding. So that's who he is, right? A and crusader even then. Even, <laughs> even then. Like, like he, did, he was pro-Iraq war. Not enough to actually join to fight it. <laughs> yeah, right. But enough to do a rally. Like, I'm pro-Iraq war, but not that pro-Iraq war. You know what I mean? I'm not going to fucking go fight it. I want someone else to go fight it. A poor kid who couldn't afford to go to Northwestern University like Dave Weigel. So we, so we have a lot of fun with him. And he's come at me in lots of disingenuous ways. And every time he does it, boomerangs again. Just like with uh, Ryan Grimm, the D.C. Bureau Chief of the Intercept, or TYT, or whoever it happens to, Kyle Kalinske. When they come at me in a disingenuous way, it boomerangs. They think yeah. they're going to get away with it. It doesn't. It if they don't back, give, <laughs> yeah. It comes right back like uh, those pervert mustaches from the 70s. Yeah. So, <laughs> rings right back. So he he came at me saying that he said force the vote was a bad idea and that Jenk Uger was against it. And Jenk Uger is, uh, is one of the founding members of the organization. And then someone had to remind him, Glenn Greenwald, a better journalist, reminded him the other co-founder of the Justice Dems is Kyle Kalinske, who supports door strategy. So again, that's a journalist giving half the story to mislead you. That's who Dave Weigel is. So I don't have any law. I don't, I, you know, um, and plus he lied about Jeff Bezos being in bed with the CIA. We all know he is. And when he was confronted about it on Twitter, he said, oh, he, he tried to discredit the source. And then when he couldn't discredit the source anymore, he goes, it's Bezos, not the Post. Now go away. So he's trying to pretend that Jeff Bezos doesn't have anything to do with the Washington Post, even though he owns it. So why do I bring all this up? Why do I bring Dave Weigel up? Because it's fun. I, I like playing. I like teasing on Dave Weigel about his mustache, that it looks like a porn mustache, because it does. And um, but this this happened. So this person, Cam Harless, tweets out, every girl is bi. You just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual. Not the worst joke in the world, not the best joke in the world, but it's not the worst joke in the world. It's not that it's not that bad. I wouldn't want to write it, but maybe I would retweet it, but it's a little bit eh, lower would, on my Yeah. I mean, if I was a WAPO reporter, I'd be it like, sounds this like, is a killer joke. Yeah, if I was a, <laughs> if I was a Washington Post reporter, I would be like, this is the funniest thing I ever heard. Cuz girls don't cuz you know Dave Weigel's got marks all over his body from women touching him with 10-foot poles. So whenever he sees <laughs> whenever he sees a tweet like this, he, oh, fuck, oh, I hate women. So, you know, so that's what that is. But um, anyway, so it's, there it is. He retweeted it. So there it is. He retweeted Wait, Oh, do you have jokes? Yeah. Uh, oh, it's the next one. Is that yeah. One. I'm sorry. And then this woman sees that the, she also works at the Washington Post. She sees that Dave Weigel retweeted this joke. And she says, fantastic to work at a news outlet where retweets like this are allowed. First of all, I like how I, I like how she says allowed. Don't you like that? Like they're kids in school and or something. It's just weird that someone gets yeah, right. to, to tweet a joke. They're allowed. Allowed. Someone's in the world doing something. Anyway, he's not scree He's not telling that joke in the newsroom, is he? He's just tweeting it. He's yeah, it wasn't at the news outlet. It was on no. The that's right. That's right. He didn't tweet it on the Washington Post official Twitter feed. He did it on okay, <laughs> right? Uh, you never get to punch out. That's the point. And by the way, so we're going to tell you about this woman. So this woman, Felicia, whatever her name is, Sumnez or whatever. Sumnez. She's a bit of a maniac when it comes to this stuff. She likes to ruin people's careers on the hashtag Me Too thing. And it turns out she's spreading bullshit a lot of the time. Uh, in fact, her, her latest thing was dismissed. And you, you, you see what's, I mean, the, anyway. So Dave Weigel has to apologize. Uh... I just removed a tweet, retweet of an offensive joke. I apologize. Did not mean to cause any harm. That's what it's like to work for the Washington Post. <laughs> and so, someone says, imagine working at one of these places where everyone's job description now includes constantly trying to get your coworkers fired. 
because that's what that was. She was trying to get, I don't think, I don't want Dave Wick, Weigel to, all the stuff I've said about him, I just want people to know who he is. So when yeah, he right. says something disingenuous about me and tells a half truth about me or a half lie about me, I want people to consider the source. That's why I tell people who Dave Weigel is. That's well, why. He's also, he's also not your coworker either. I mean, that's a little bit extra. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in fairness, though, in fairness, uh, to Dave Weigel, he works at the Washington Post. So this probably sums up his reality pretty well. It really does, don't you? I mean, that's the world he's living in. Can the you bipolar. imagine can, yeah. the bipolar? That's the world he's living in, the bipolar world. Can, <laughs> can you imagine policing coworkers retweets? Not even the tweets that they wrote, but a retweet. Like, I always thought people said retweets do not mean endorsement, right? Sometimes yeah. you're just retweeting it so people can, you see this? That's what Dave Weigel should have said. He should have just lied. He should have just said. <laughs> you should call Ryan Grimm and get some tips on how to. How to lie better. your way out of a lie. <laughs> uh, so Oliver Darcy's got a scoop. He says, Washington Post Chief Spock's Chris Karate issued a statement on Dave Weigel's retweet of a sexist joke, which this is really happening. <laughs> this is really happening. I mean, the Ryan Grimm story is, is mainstream media level news is what I'm saying, you know, like. Here we go. Which has, he since apologized. Editors have made clear to the staff that the tweet was reprehensible and demeaning language or actions like this will not be tolerated. Now back to cheering on the human slaughter in Ukraine, Syria, Libya, Ethiopia, Somalia, and Yemen. We will not put up with a sexist joke. But we will send $40 billion to, for a slaughter in Ukraine. Uh, so that's his big, great, great work, Oliver, <laughs> uh, in a Slack conversation, he, he, he goes on in a Slack conversation, took plus a plus, took, took a Slack. They had a Slack conversation about the retweet. What is Slack? Slack is thing that people use to communicate with inside businesses. I think uh -huh. Mate gold wrote to staffers in a Slack channel. I just want to assure all of you. It's like an email chain, a Slack. It's like an email chain, but it's just one chain. Oh, I see. Uh, I want you to assure all of you that the Post is committed to maintaining a respectful workplace for everyone. We do not tolerate demeaning language or actions. So basically, the joke is accurate. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh Well, here's a no. Here's another take on that. That joke is not accurate. How about that? The joke is not a, clearly the mental illness here is borderline personality with histrionic and narcissistic elements. So the joke is it's not bipolar. Yeah. So but, it's, a, it's a different it's a it's a buzz. Yeah, it's a mental disorder, but a different one. Uh, here's another one. Uh, my God, is this really worth anyone's time and energy? The narrator, it was not. <laughs> Well, if you worked at the Washington Post, Lorenzo Poe, your time and energy were, were already worthless. So why not? Why yeah, what not? What are they going to do? By the way, I debated a guy from the Washington Post yesterday on a podcast about Syrian policy. And I'm waiting for that video to drop. It hasn't dropped yet. I, I hope it doesn't get lost <laughs> because it was quite fun. And I got to debunk a Washington Post writer. And I'm really fingers crossed that, that it drops today, that video. A guy who won a Pulitzer Prize Ooh. writing about, uh, I think, writing about Syria. The guy who I was on with yesterday on the, you know, I was on the uh, the Comedy Cellar podcast, whatever that. Oh, you went on Gnomes? Oh, yeah. He gets some, of course, he gets like a. Yes. The guy's a Pulitzer Prize winning writer. He's got a book out called The Red Line right now. And anyway, so I'll talk about that in another segment. Washington Post is more concerned about a staffer retweeting an innocuous dad joke then the latest in Taylor Lorenz's never-ending ethical crisis, having multiple factual errors in her libelous piece on random low-level YouTubers that had the audacity to support Johnny Depp. Says it all. That's exactly right, says it all. This is what they're worried about. Not, not Taylor Lorenz's complete bullshit article that's a hit piece on someone she disagrees with politically. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> 
uh, to put things in perspective, Washington Post has not issued a statement on Lorenz lying about contacting sources. Update, they frickin' suspended Dave Weigel. Wow. Now, Dave Weigel probably was not going to expect me. Maybe it hurts him more that I defend him, so that's why I'm defending him. <laughs> Maybe that'll oh. hurt him. They'll go, you got people like Jimmy Dore defending you. So I am defending him, and I think it's this is crazy. The Washington Post suspends reporter David Weigel over sexist retweet. Weigel's retweet was spotlighted public, publicly by his colleague, Felicia Sanmez, who recently had a discrimination lawsuit against the paper dismissed. Dismissed. She, she had a discrimination lawsuit, and they was, it didn't get settled. It was dismissed. What does that tell you? That she had no case, and that she is a bit of a maniac. It also tells me the Post did not want to deal with this with another goddamn lawsuit from Felicia Somnes, so they had to suspend him. <laughs> you know? Yes, oh, that's right. They're afraid of another lawsuit. And by the way, she then pr had to protect her tweet. She said people were coming at her. Wait a minute, you try to get a guy fired for a retweet, and now you're the victim because people called you out for it? Yes. Yes. So here, you know, I think here, Karen's got a bad rap, and a lot of Ambers and Taylors and stuff should be shouldering the burden. I, I agree of that name calling. It's, we should switch it from Karen to something else. Yeah. But here's here's her tweet. You can't see it anymore. And he says, "What an utter clown show they've got going on over there." He means over at the Washington Post. What a clown show. And here, then she's going to scream sexism. And here's, I love this opinions, <laughs> internet. She shovels her opinions of shit over onto the internet. And then she's, <laughs> and then the shit comes back at her. Oh my God, misogyny. Help, misogyny. <laughs> There's three shovels. Three shovels. <laughs> three shovels coming back. <laughs> and so, uh, as much as I, I uh, you know, don't respect Dave Weigel. I don't. You know, most of these journalists are just as sleazy as the politicians they cover, and he's one of them. Uh, right. But I don't think he should be fired for that retweet. I think that is it. Just again, it's another th th that will get Dave Weigel more followers. It will make him more popular. This video will make him more popular, even though I told you who he is pro -war, pro war Jeff Bezos employee. Well, also, like he's the type of guy. All of them, especially in shitty ass uh, legacy journalism. They're all punks. You only the people I said on the left who was like, I think Me Too, there's a problem with it here. All the rest of them have to like salute the flag of Me Too first before they even talk about a problem. Yeah. And then when like Biden gets credibly accused, then they're in an awkward position. So well, he wasn't sticking his neck out for anybody that was falsely accused of anything. And that came down on him. That's what happens to all these guys. Oh, I see the point Kurt's making. Yeah. He's saying, when did Dave Weigel ever stand up for someone in his similar position? That's what you're well, saying. Never. They all go, no, you just keep your head down until, you know, you do the thing that gets you, like, advancement. You know, like a pro-war rally at your school with your school paper. Like, that, you do that stuff. Oh, I got it. Well, there you go. So there's the saga of Dave Weigel. And I'm going to do it, and I'll do another segment on the woman who accused him because... I, I, I should I should I I should be able to sue somebody for just having to read about her. <laughs> it, it, it's disgusting. Should we do it? Should we do that segment now, or should we wait? You. It's a long segment. That's why I'm going to save it for Wednesday. I'm going to save it, and we'll have Max here. Max Blumenthal will be here on Wednesday to talk about the Bilderberg meeting over the weekend in Washington D.C. And we'll have him comment on her because he's a real journalist. Okay. You know, I keep oh. for, uh, confusing them with the Build a Bear. <laughs> The Builder Bear Group, I keep thinking. I'm like, it's Builder Bird. That's right. Here we're doing stand-up comedy in Los Angeles on June 11th, and then we're going to Chicago, Sacramento, and San Diego on July 16th for the taping of my new special. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all tickets. See you there.